Dit is de mythe van Oert, de schikgodin die ons alle lot beheerst. Zij weeft de draden waar wij niet weten. Met heidevolk is het ook al regelmatig gebeurd dat er dingen gebeurden die wij niet konden voorspellen. Maar uiteindelijk weten we dat zij de draden weeft van ons lot. Dit nummer is uit ons hart en het heet Oert. The main goal for Heidevolk is not to be one of the biggest bands there is, but to be one of the bands that is sincere about their music, sincere about their lyrics, and try to uh, tell people how life can be different if they would just take a step back and they find a whole new world that, that, that they didn't think uh, would exist. We started out, of course, in the, in the folk and pagan metal scene. Um, this was, at the time when we were beginning, this was uh, also growing. This whole scene was growing along with Heidefolk, when Heidefolk was growing. I think we, uh, we definitely uh, um, appealed to, uh, to these fans, to the folk and pagan metal fans. But on the way, we've, uh, we've got the interest of more uh, subgenres of metal and also uh, genres of rock and hard rock. It's not really that we make our music for a specific audience. We make our music because we want to tell a story. The story somehow appeals to us in a certain way, so that's how it's going to sound. sound. And it's not that we are looking, like, okay, if we make it this way, we have more fans or we have more people. Or, that's not the thing. We are, it is the story or, or the song that becomes this thing. And, and it's not meant for a specific group of people. That is also the same thing with the lyrics we have, because we sing in, uh, in Dutch. Our first live gigs, there were a lot of gigs in the Netherlands, Belgium and Germany, of course. Um, we did have a, a wish to play uh, a larger, uh, through a larger region of Europe or, or the US or whatever. Um, but we didn't know if we could expect it until we've released our album with Napalm Records. Yeah. And Fans all around the world were, were asking for us. From that point on, we started reaching for new regions. Wij heffen de hoorn en zeilen dan drinken op hen die vielen in vijandland. Van heen en ver zijn wij gekomen en keren nu terug. Now there are a lot of people asking themselves, folk metal, what is this combination, what is this genre, is it new or whatever? Um, no, it's not new, it's a combination between two genres, it's metal and it's folk. Hey, Op winst in de strijd, op vlees en jodelijk, kom laat ons nu drinken op ons Gelderland. Tijden duistere nachten doorstaan, de diepste dalen door boven. Eén zou uit in ons bestaan, door nachtelijke wouden gesloten. Het vuur zal weer vloeien, het vuur zal weer vloeien, het vuur zal weer vloeien in ons Gelderland. Oh, my God. 
Folkloric stories uh, we want to convey, they ask for a certain sound, they ask for a, a certain type of instruments, and we just put those instruments along. But I don't necessarily think that these instruments make it a folk metal band. It's yeah. more the, uh, the lyrics and uh, um, the story you want to tell. You told about old Dutch stories and mm -hmm. myths. Nobody else tells these stories. These no. are in old children's books or whatever. But the musical version of the storyteller. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But nobody else does it. I mean, this if if everybody stops doing that, then yeah. these stories get lost. Yeah, yeah. be lost. Yeah. inspiring thing is that it is something from ourselves. It's something where we've grown up in and um, something we've um, we've been part of for all of our lives. <laughs> Stand still, get your feet back in the dirt, look around and see that there's so much to find anywhere where you are. It could be in America, it could be on, on European ground or in Africa or wherever you are, even in the middle of the desert. Just look around and you'll find some amazing stuff. And be it history or, or look up to the stars and be inspired, inspired about the future, or, but look around. I would like Heidevolk to be the band you can trust on to have a party with. When people come to our gigs, I want them to have a good time, have a party with us. And if you're interested and in paying attention to the lyrics, you might even learn something about the stories that we tell, where we're from, and uh, find some information in that, something that can spark your imagination. <laughs> becomes a center of all this activity, not, not just for the band, but for people around it and fans and, and 
you know, people driving together to shows and, and uh, the whole online thing also. So it's a lot bigger than just these musicians together. My name is Savik Balayan. I'm uh, originally I'm a fine artist, filmmaker, animator, and uh, I've worked a lot with Tyler Fox since 2008. Well, it all started with drinking beers and we be became friends, and uh, then when uh, they start uh, recording a new album, they ask me if I uh, if I like to do some artworks for them because they like a lot of my works. So, I did for sure, no problem, why not? It was the most work of all, and because it was very... Uh, how can I say... It's all, uh, all the pieces are uh, became one together. It was a lot of work and I, li I, li I liked it a lot. It was more uh, illustrating a book than an uh, album. Hi, I'm Irma. I'm the violin player of Hi the Folk. I put a note on there for him like, uh, hey, I want to replace uh, for the time being until you find someone else. And well, uh, here I am still today. I'm classically trained. I went to conservatory, also classical um, uh, education. Uh, well, I, when I was on the conservatory, uh, I already um, did some things with uh, the, the, the pop music uh, department. I played on uh, final exams and musicals and stuff. And uh, well, when I was uh, 16, 17, and, uh, I already uh, listened to uh, My Dying Bride and Skyclad and those are my biggest influences and well, I always wanted to play in a band since then, so uh, here we are. In the, in the beginning, uh, well, when I started there were already violin parts uh, that I uh, figured out. Um, sometimes they had already worked a lot of uh, stuff out, but in uh, other occasions like in Deemstering, uh, only the, the uh, main melody was there and the guitar parts and all the violins and cellos and I uh, filled in. More, it, 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 it became more of an interaction, spending most nights figuring parts out, um, and we're still working that way today. So in that uh, way, I feel more a part of the band than in the beginning. I started off working for Heidevolk, uh, I think it was 2004. I was working on a project uh, with local metal bands, trying to get them to a higher level. We just started another band, uh, Heidevolk, and uh, yeah, we sing about uh, walking on the Vega and uh, actually it's blowing up very, very fast. So yeah, I had to laugh about it. And then they had the the Strindlos is Gebore release show, which was, uh, I think that was the first show I mixed with them. It's like, oh yeah. This, could be big it was uh yeah it was sold out and uh yeah kind of blew up from there doing sounds basically what i did for 
for yeah since since I was fourteen. So I, I, that was that was what I what I always did. But they're fun to mix because there's a lot going on, and of course the the hardest part is like you have a loud band, well especially a loud drummer. The rest of the band is controllable, but Yost is uncontrollable. Yeah! <laughs> and then there's yeah especially the, the low voice which is not that loud which is, which can be quite a yeah that can be challenging especially on smaller stages where you just get lots of bleed in the in the mics so that's that's the most challenging part because of, co of course the lyrics and the, the voice is really important so that's that's where the, the challenge happens keep developing a bit but most of them they're like they're developed in the studio and then that's the version that they're going to be bringing yeah oh, but now with uh with kun and uh storm playing guitar that that's more of a an organic element also to it because they they've been playing guitar together for a long time and they can just communicate with 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 their eyes or with sign language that's stuff that that's that's quite new to hide hold but that hadn't, had, that wasn't done before the two of them were in the band. Kuhn has always been my go-to guy. He's my best friend and everything I do as, as a project, I get him on board and when somebody gets sick or they can't make it to a show, you're gonna ask your friends to fill in, you know, and Kun is the kind of guy that he can learn a set in like a week or in a few hours if he has to and just jumps on stage. But with Heidevolk, that was like, they asked Kun to fill in. Would you like to play a few gigs with uh, Heidevolk? My first reaction was, it's like folk metal. I, I don't do folk metal, you know, I, I'm used to play death metal, black metal, more technical stuff. Uh, or the other side is that I play like really mellow stuff, but not folk metal. It's not my it's not my game. Couldn't have other had other obligations. So, no, no, you should check Kevin and he'll do it. Of course, after that, I got the position to play and to stay with the band. Last year, uh, he came back to me and uh, he was like, "Well, uh, they need a, they, they need another guy for the session uh, for the live guitar." What do you say? And I was like, yeah, fuck yeah. <laughs> it's another band we're in together on the same stage playing the same guitars and it's, uh, that's amazing. That's, that's really a gift. I think High Folk is a pretty special band and uh, I think most people that listen to High Folk already have that feeling that there is something about High Folk which is different comparing it to other bands, uh, not 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 musical, not music-wise maybe, but more there is a special feeling in the band. Everybody gets something from it, but um, I think the reason they and this I think is said in every single documentary about music, but they stay true to themselves. That whole thing, I think it's. Um, it's probably the most important thing to get you through the whole music industry. 
is to stay true to yourself. And I think they do that, and if people feel that from the stage, you know, you see it's, it's not like we have all these characters, but you can also see that it's a group of friends, you know, and, and people like that, and, and I, I think it can come across. You have the feeling when you listen to the songs, but if you see us live, you have, or know us, that feeling grows. And uh, it's like a family, but like a weird family. Uh, with, a, with a special uh, view on life and respect towards uh, culture and others and nature, which is really important to us. We're proud of our culture, we're proud of our, uh, our beautiful nature and we're proud of uh, the, the heritage, the, the, uh, the people that lived here, the, the beliefs that, that were here and we try to translate those things into songs. In the tokens glowed by a break in the dark, as the clocken luiden in the schemer licht, and leeft het goud rond het graf van de man die voor de twaalf slikte. I mean, Dutch is not a universal language, and Heidevolk is the only band from Holland, I think, operating worldwide where people are singing phonetically yeah. along with the lyrics in Dutch. I mean, that's that's. Remarkable. Um, I think with Heidefolk, you will hear that metal is not only about dark and evil uh, stories or uh, creepy mythology. It's also about being being proud of something, being able to tell how beautiful nature is with a barbaric sound on it. What kind of acts do that? Like they sing in a native language? which people don't understand, but they sing along with it. What we focused on was more like creating our own sound. The, the whole thing with Heidevolk is that it has to be diverse. We have a lot more of a, a rock vibe going on. That's the same also with the, the, the clean vocals we have. I mean the dual male vocals, which is a trademark of Heidevolk, yeah. that, uh, that really appeal to a lot of people that are not into the, the, the whole growling kind of thing. Of course we have our occasional growls, but like 90% of it is, is just clean male vocals. Okay, I, I like this hide pool. They're not too rough, and, and yeah. but they're still like very very heavy, and they have they really got their own sound. Folk doesn't necessarily need to be uh, uh, upsy topsy and humpa humpa. It can also be really dark and really metal. But there there are stories we want to convey, and those stories are folkloric stories. We uh, had this thing that we wanted to do a long time ago uh, with Heidepool. We wanted to make an album about the Veluwe, about where we are right now, where we come a lot. 
that's a cool thing when you uh, even uh, though you know the stories and you visited the Veluwe a lot when you dive into it and you get into the magical landscape of the Veluwe it, it really grabs you Writing songs for Heidefolk is always a bit of a challenge. Um, you want to have something uh, that is fresh, that is new, um, that's inspiring, but it's also got to be very Heidefolk. Yeah. This is a hashtag 06, the current code name of uh, our new album. It says Verval Romeinse Rijk until Charlemagne. For this album, we chose uh, a lot of stories that um, uh, are about the decline of the Roman Empire, where the Roman Empire is feeling it's getting weaker because um, they've got a lot of internal struggles. They have uh, conquered many countries, but those countries are feeling that the Roman Empire is declining and they are taking back their lands and taking back their own culture, their own gods, etc. It's also about the, the Angles and the Saxons and the Frisians and uh, who came across the, uh, the sea to help the Celts fight against the Picts in Great Britain. In the end, the Celts, they found themselves um, pushed away by the Anglo-Saxons Anglo -Saxons and Frisians uh, when they let too many people in. They were conquered themselves. So um, that's, that must be a strange feeling from the, for the Celts. And we try to make a song um, that's uh, from the view of the Celts. We will have some very special guest vocals on it. I cannot tell you who, but uh, that will be pretty cool. Stage one is uh, where I created, and it's still blurry. Um, it is an idea that's coming right off, uh, right out of my head, and I just made a, a draft here in the computer, and then I won't look at it like for one or two weeks because I have to structure it inside my head. When I am, um, when I cannot make too much, uh, I don't have too much ideas for music. I go to the to the song that's a draft, and I go to structure it. That's stage two. I put things in place, make uh, choruses. I make uh, uh, parts that are not really good better, and then the song is in stage three, and that means that the other guys are getting involved. So why not? Eh? So why not? Uh, let's try it. Let's try. <laughs> Stage four is uh, uh, when the the base uh, the basic thing is uh, is done. This song is going to stage four, and that is where uh, I give the song to the ensemble. Uh, we're going to give it to the choir because we got some really cool choir lines on it. 
I think there are two wolves uh, with Heidefolk. The first one is the, uh, the world where we record music and where, where we create songs, where we tell the stories. And the other world is where we live the song, where we live the stories and where we get it out into the world. And that's uh, our live show. Let me say this, uh, our fans are the best fans of the world. They are, so. of course, There's no doubt about it. I'd like people to know that we, as musicians and people, we love that so much that they, they form this group of people around that music. Um, and we really appreciate that. So yeah, I'd like people to see that, that, that that's one of the reasons we, we do this. We always go into the crowd, you know, we're not the band that stays backstage if we, no. if we don't need to be there for an interview or arranging something, we're out in the crowd talking to the fans and... Backstage is boring. <laughs> so if we arrive somewhere and we, yeah. we have like two or three hours of just not doing anything and then we have to meet up for the gig, it's like the car opens and like boom and we all just shoot out to a whole different side of the festival terrain or to into the village with two people they go into the village two are going into the forest then we have this gig and just when we're prepping and everybody's telling like oh i met that person oh and i've i've been doing this and i've seen that and that makes it that cool for us as well just because there's always something that that happened or, or, yeah. or <laughs> something crazy that went on it gives you uh, interaction with your fans. It's not just a band, it's the whole picture, it's a feeling. That's the way I would like to, uh, I would like people to see Heidefolk. I think that people outside of the metal, metal scene think that metal uh, fans are uh, dumb and considerate and uh, mean people. I mean, of course, there are, there are people like that in the metal scene, but generally speaking, metalheads are uh, the most wonderful, smart people on the planet. We just have a dark sense of humor and uh, we don't like uh, getting fucked with. We really love to interact with our fans and, you know, go, go meet them after the show and, uh, and have a beer with them. I keep being surprised how much people are touched by the, the, the music they can make. I mean, obviously that, that is something you strive for. The best part of playing live is the interaction with, at first, the audience and each other, you know, between between the band members themselves. You know, playing for an audience gives you so much energy, so much pleasure to, know, to, to just do that, you know? We never hyped or, or anything, so we had this really slow built fan base um, by actually going around, meeting new people. Um, uh, people got more interested, but so, so is life mostly and we have such a big fan base or a diverse fan base that um, because they always knew what we were about they always knew what to expect for a live gig they always uh, knew that okay there's something new coming out it's not gonna be what I have at home but it's gonna be a new story it's gonna be new interesting story that they tell and I believe that we have this that's why we have this really strong foundation of fan base, fan base uh, actually uh, built up through the years when we're on tour we're also we're working with Heidefolk of course but we're also on holiday and when we're on holiday we want to have fun oh fun Ooh. that's new what yeah. we're gonna what, what are we gonna see what what is there to explore with who's who? there to meet <laughs> yeah with, with whom it's better to have fun than with our fans just drink with them and, and share stories, share all kinds of things, you know, just have have a great time. Yeah. And I think that that's a really important part of Heidepolk. It, it has always been and it will always be.
I think I'm gonna stick with the words that Rowan always uses. He, um, like with the song Urt, it's about the lady that weaves our fates together and um, somehow we're here because of that band. You and I were here because of that band. This is a song about the, 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 the goddess, the, the, the nun, and she's weaving our threads. When you're born, there's a thread, and she weaves it, and she weaves it with other people. It's about fate, and how fate can be, when you think you got it all under control, but fate can still you know, hit you in the back, or whatever, or give you prosperity, or whatever. It always becomes something else. Whatever you do will, will evolve into something else. You think you know Heide Volk and what they're doing, and 10 years from now, you wouldn't have seen it coming. If there's anything I'd like people to know and share is I didn't see this coming. I'd like to tell people never lose hope. We're talking, our threads have been crossed and they were bound together for this very moment.
We zien jullie de volgende keer weer. En we hopen u ons terug te zien op een van onze Hairlife Show einde dit jaar. Dank jullie wel.